captain has turned on the seatbelt light. Please take your seat and fasten your seatbelts. Thank you. When you first start working in Flare, it can be a bit overwhelming, especially when you find out how many features are in Flare and how much you can do. So don't expect to be an expert at everything right away. Instead, begin by trying to wrap your brain around a few concepts and features that are the most important when it comes to learning Flare. These concepts and features all tend to revolve around the idea of content reuse or single sourcing, which means that you can take the same content, reuse it, and produce multiple outputs from it. First, understand the concept of building blocks. In other authoring tools, you're probably used to everything being a part of a single file. The content, the table of contents, the glossary, the styles, and so on. It's not like that in Flair. Instead, most of the pieces are separate. This is one of the things that helps make Flair so powerful and give you so much flexibility in how to create your output. Your content is stored in topic files and in smaller snippet files, and images exist separately as image files and are included in topics and snippets by reference. Your table of contents is a different file. The glossary is yet another file. The styles are stored in a separate cascading style sheet file. In fact, you might even have a project with multiple TOCs, multiple glossaries, and multiple style sheets. It all depends on how you want to work. As far as indexes are concerned, they're created in part by inserting index keywords into topics and snippets. There's no separate index file in the Flare project. However, for the most part, you're dealing with separate files as building blocks. Then you use another file, called a target, to take all of these pieces, merge them together, and generate the output you want. It's kind of like putting a bunch of ingredients into a food processor and ending up with a smoothie. Second, understand the idea of topic-based authoring. Topics are where you type your text and other content. If you come from the world of print publishing, you'll probably be tempted at first to create really long topics, such as one topic for each chapter or even one topic for an entire PDF manual. And while Flare lets you create very long topics, and there may be cases where you need to do that, for the most part, you want your topics to be smaller, digestible chunks of content that you can reuse for different outputs. One chapter in a PDF that you create from Flare will usually consist of several separate topics. But don't make your topics too short, either. We're not necessarily talking about single sentences or paragraphs. Think about a long magazine article. It sometimes has several subheadings throughout it to break the article up into logical sections. That's how topics are. By doing that, you can reuse the same topic in several PDFs and in your online output. Third, understand how tables of contents work. Creating a table of contents in Flare can be very easy to do for both online and print output. For online output, it can be as easy as dragging topics into the TOC editor. You can create a TOC by adding books and items with links. The links usually point to topics, but for online outputs, they can also point to external files, other help systems, and movies. You put all of these books and items in a structure that you think would be useful for the individual. End users can then browse through a TOC to find information. At an HTML5 top navigation output, the TOC items become links in menus. You have the option to customize your TOCs in lots of ways, getting as fancy as you want. However, there are some things you should know. The most important thing to understand is that the TOC files that you see in the project organizer work differently for online output than they do for print-based output. For online outputs, TOC files are exactly as their name suggests. They're files that create TOCs or menus in the output. But for print-based outputs, that same TOC file functions more like an outline. The element that actually generates a TOC in print-based output is called a proxy. You can manually create that proxy yourself, or you can select this option in the target editor and let Flare do it all for you. There are pros and cons for both methods. You can see both online and print TOCs in action by looking at Flare's many project templates on the start page. Typically, the templates labeled as basic use the easy auto-generation method for creating print TOCs, and the advanced templates use the more robust method by making use of a combination of a TOC proxy, styles, and page layouts. Fourth, understand snippets and variables. Think of snippets almost as miniature topics. It's content that you want to reuse in many different topics, but you don't want to have to keep retyping that content, so you just type it in once in a snippet. Then you insert that snippet into as many topics as you need it to be in. Normally, snippets are made up of one or more paragraphs, perhaps including elements such as lists, images, tables, or text. We're not talking about single words or phrases here. That's what variables are for. 
If you've got single words or short phrases that you need to reuse again and again, create variables. Think of your company's product name or version number, or maybe a phone number. Those are good things to turn into variables. Fifth, understand condition tags. This is where Flare gets really powerful. Condition tags are used to tell Flare, hey, this piece of content or this file, I want it to be in this output, but not that one. For example, maybe you plan to have two versions of some online output, one version for beginners and one version for advanced users. Much of the content you create is going to be the same for both audiences, but some of it is going to be written only for a specific audience. So you can create condition tags for each audience and use them to separate the content when you build your output. Sixth, understand styles. Styles are what you use to give your content the look that you want it to have. Flare uses cascading style sheets, or CSS, and the rules around them. CSS isn't a Flare thing. It's an international standard for styling web content, and it was developed by a group called the World Wide Web Consortium, or W3C. You can learn all about the W3C on the internet. It is loads of fun. Now, it would take an eternity to explain CSS here. The important thing for you to know is that it's the basis of styles in Flare. And even though Flare has a user interface that makes it easy to work with these styles, and you don't have to be an expert to get started, the difference between a good Flare user and a great Flare user is often an understanding and mastery of CSS. And the final important thing about Flare? Understand what you're trying to accomplish before you begin. What kinds of output do you want to create? Here's a help topic that lets you compare all of the output types that Flare offers. Do you need online output, print output, or both? How many different versions of online and print output do you need? How will you name your files to keep things consistent and organized? What kinds of snippets and variables will you need? What kinds of condition tags will you need? Will one author be working on the project, or will multiple people be involved? In other words, the more planning and preparation you do beforehand, the smoother your journey in Flare will be.